great to be here. I just wanted to give a really quick overview for those that might not be too familiar with MLA. Um, we're not here just to take your levies, but we're here to invest your levies into meaningful research and marketing to promote goat meat. Um, the a premium product that Australian goat meat is on our export markets, and I'll touch on that later in my talk as well. So a little bit about MLA. Uh, we're a service provider to the industry, and we conduct research, development, and adoption of that research back to industry. We also promote the marketing of um, Australian goat meat products, both domestically and to our international markets to help further grow that demand, but also the trust in Australian goat meat products. As a bit of an industry structure, if you're not familiar with it, our mic sits at the top and is guided with policy um, with GAICA, so the Goat Industry Council of Australia, and then through GERDAC, which is the Goat Industry um, Research Advisory Council, we talk with MLA and we set the priorities about the research and development that's being conducted in the goat industry, and then MLA is, is funding that through the levies that are, are coming from any transaction in goats being sold. So just to give you a bit of a breakdown of how it all works. We invest both both levy funded projects, but also um, MLA donor company. So you might say the MDC has been thrown around a little bit. It's where we can actually match non-federally funded government. So we get more bank for your buck to invest even more research and address the priorities that you're having and facing in the industry as well. We work really closely with a right, wide range of partners. So producers like yourselves, also processors and research organisations to make sure that we've actually got that sound science that underpins change and underpins um, decisions that we can give to you in, in terms of the type of information that we're portraying and advising you so you've got best practice that's actually based upon sound information. We also work really closely with GAICA, so the Goat Industry Council of Australia, to help set those priorities, so the issues that you're facing, to make sure the research that we're funding is actually going to have those meaningful outcomes to you and can be packaged in a way that's going to make change in the industry. To give you a really quick overview of, of recently how we've invested those levy funds, we've invested half a million dollars, and that's gone into investments into the people within the goat industry, so helping to upskill and also to reinvest. And then also our customers, most of it has gone into the livestock, so that on-farm animal um, productivity. We've also invested into the markets and the systems as well. Market insights, and this is what I've been asked to really talk about today. It's a little bit about our domestic trends, but also where is our great goat meat products going overseas and the markets that liaises with them. It's really exciting to see that we're in 2021, you can see that we're actually starting to have that rebuild occur after some unfavorable seasonal conditions which did see a bit of a contraction in our goat supply chain. So we were producing less over that 2017 down to 2020. So the volume of goat meat um, produced in Australia was declining. Now we're actually seeing that promising rebuild over 2021 and the start of the 2022 um, forecasting metrics are looking really promising going forward. But what we can also see is that we're pushing that carcass weight up too. So they're coming back in better condition. It's higher than what we've seen before, but it's a really promising trend going forward. In terms of our over the hook prices, this is a, just a nice little graph to give you a bit of an overview of where we are at the moment. And that forecasted trend for um, 2021 and into 22 is actually going to look quite similar. So it's not necessarily a plateau, but it's a really exciting time to be involved in the in the goat industry and as those forecasted price points seem to stay like they're going to maintain at quite a high point. So for you as producers, it's great for the, for the processes. Don't worry, your export markets are still really high in the, in the value of what you're getting as well. So it's a really promising outlook for everyone across the supply chain. In terms of goat meat utilisation and, and exports, we are very much a, an export dominant market. We only domestically produce, consume 8% of what we actually produce. So it's a very small domestic market for goat meat. But we are very reliant upon that export market with majority of, of the meat that we're producing going overseas. And that trend has continued um, for quite a, a long period of time, as you can see on this graph. But 
we're starting to develop both um, marketing and expanding those opportunities to increase the demand for goat meat in Australia, but also really tap into those overseas export markets as the global demand for protein continues to rise. We want to make sure that um, goat meat is very much at the forefront of, of a lot of markets um, and that Australian goat meat is the preferred goat meat that they're importing to their countries. So looking at a, a global goat meat production, and this is on a, a volume type basis, um, Australia is a really small player in the game. So globally, we don't produce a whole lot of goat meat when you compare us to a lot of other countries. But we are the largest exporter of goat meat on a global scale. So we don't produce a lot of it, but what we do produce is really high quality. And what we also do produce is a very much an export dominated market. Where 27% of the, the 74,000 tonnes of goat meat that is exported is from Australia, closely followed by Ethiopia, which is our main, um, I guess, export competitor. To give you a bit of an insight into the point of difference within our markets, Ethiopia is a big goat meat producer. They produce a lot of goat meat, but domestically they consume a lot of goat meat, and so they don't actually export too much. Only about 13% of their actual national um, volume of goat meat that they produce, they actually export. So they're still an important player that we need to take into account when we're thinking about our markets and our market share and competitiveness, but they only produce a small amount. But if you contrast that to the green lines, this is the Australian supply and export demand curve. So you can see we're almost exporting all of what we're producing. And the reason why there is this, um, this a little bit of difference and, and continued growth in Ethiopia is because they're actually going through a bit of a shift at the moment where they're advising a lot of their agricultural producers to, to go away from uh, raising cattle and livestock, which they traditionally would have been, and there's a push into small stock. So that's both sheep and goats. It's a little bit more sustainable for them, but it's being funded by a lot of aid programs, um, and it's that shift that we're seeing. So we're expecting that this market's potentially going to continue to increase, so the volume of goat meat produced in Ethiopia will continue to um, increase in, in volume and potentially we'll keep an eye on how their market for export is going to continue as well because that could approach in some of our market share with some of our export countries. When we look at exp export value, we're also one of the largest um, exporters in the world based on value. So we're high quality, we've got a great reputation for Australian proteins and goats is no exception to that. And that really keeps our value up there. So for the, the goat, global goat meat industry is worth $295 million and Australia is contributing about 34% to that. So we're a big player in the game. We produce the quality, like I just said, but we also, um, we also extract a lot of value from that global export market. If we're to look at this, this graphic in terms of where our actual export meat is going, it's not just one single market. Predominantly, a lot of our export product is going to the US and that's remained um, a trend that we can see year upon year. And the value and the unit value that we're getting for that product is also increasing um, almost exponentially, which is really great to see in terms of the producer, but also for the processes of the goat industry in Australia, because it adds that value and it also adds that really big promise coming into the industry that this is starting to be a real sustainable entity. It's not just a, a one, couple year fad that we've seen. It's something that's being sustained year upon year, which is really exciting to see for the goat industry going forward. There's a, oops, sorry. There's a few um, market shifts that we've seen over the years. Japan's dropped off a little bit and we've actually got a really exciting market emerging in Korea. The Korean market, we're forecasted to continue to expand in the quantity that we're exporting there. We've currently got a bit of a, a tariff going on and we're ex, um, expecting that to decrease. So as, as that um, free trade agreement is, is continuing to expand into 2023, we're ex, um, expecting to see a bit of an increase in supply going to that Korean market, which is great. When we look at goat meat export unit price by selected markets, 
The markets that we're supplying as an Australian exporter is really hitting the premium markets on the global goat meat um, trade. We're hitting the markets up here, which is really that US, Canada's coming into play at the moment as well, South Korea and Trinidad and Tobago. Taiwan has always been a great um, export market of goat meat from Australia. Unfortunately, it is a bit of a price sensitive market. So they seem to chop and change depending on where the, the mutton market, global mutton market's going and they'll actually interchange their protein source. They don't seem to be as, um, I guess, the, the best word would be as, as favourable for um, Australian goat meat. They're not looking at goat meat in general, they're looking at a protein source. So there does seem to be some flexibility within that Taiwanese market. And it is a, a less premium market as well, but nonetheless, it's still a really important market for Australian to be part of and to capitalise when they are wanting to buy um, goat meat. In terms of goat meat export unit for key exporters, Australia does rem remain one of the top markets um, for price. France is up there and always has been, but Australia is definitely quickly encroaching on hitting that, that top value market right up here. And we're really separating ourselves from New Zealand. Normally, Australia and New Zealand in some ways seem to get bunched together in terms of the quality of the protein that we're delivering on a global basis. New Zealand has a very small um, goat producing herd. They produce a small volume of goat, um, consume it domestically and then export. They're not a major threat to a lot of Australian markets because they just don't have the quantity to interact. So while we do support and service a lot of similar markets, on a volume and a value type basis, we're seeing great growth in, um, in the value of Australian goat meat products, but in that volume, they just don't seem to be a major um, competitor to Australian goat meat markets. And I've got a slide in a little bit that'll just touch on that to, to give you an indicator of, of where our share is in a lot of these markets that we're servicing. In terms of our other competitors, uh, mainly Ethiopia and Kenya, they, they compete on a lower price point for the quality of the, the product that they're doing and the price point does reflect that. So whilst they're servicing still a large proportion of the markets, um, they're, they're more in a, a demand and a, a lower quality bracket than what we're trying to have that point of difference in the market, which has seemed to be really successful for our, um, our export industry going forward. When we're looking at our market share of our, our export markets, you can see that Australia is really dominating all of those key markets where we're exporting into. The US continues to be our largest market and we also have a substantial market share within there. There's a bit of growth with New Zealand, um, but again, like I said, they only produce a small volume, so that's not um, too bad. And the other growth point there is Mexico. Mexico is a really interesting market. They are increasing in their demand. Majority of what they do produce is produced domestically, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. But um, you can see in that 2020 and 2021, we seem to maintain that really strong market share into a lot of these key export markets, which is great. It's also really important that we don't forget other commodities such as offal and the live animal trade as well. So what we can see is that in our offal exports, there's three main groups, I guess you would classify. The first being the US and the Hong Kong market is where majority of our offal's going. And then we would bunch it into a, another group called the other. That's broken down for you here. So you can see there's a quite a few different markets broken down into this other, which is the top layer component of this graph, predominantly um, including China and Canada coming in. So it's really interesting to know what offal is is going where, not just that offal is being exported into these markets. And what we can see with this graph is that offal is actually broken down. So different countries are taking different types of offal, which is really important for us to know as well. So the decisions, um, I guess, being made on farm, but also the general health of the, of the animals is really important when it comes to offal inspection at that, at that processing point, because you want to make sure that it's still an important commodity. Um, and that all of the offal going through is really passing that animal health inspection because that all relates to the value of um, the entire value chain in the industry, but also the, go the goat offal exports that we're seeing. We're also looking at the, the live exports and we can see here we've had a bit of a drastic decrease in, in numbers of, 
of the lithe goat exports, especially from 2014 um, down through to 2017. And those numbers um, will remain low. The main reason for this is that at the same time, we actually saw a really big increase in the, in the value goats being offered for the live animal domestically. So a lot of producers were actually getting out of that live export and going into the um, processing goats locally into that domestic market, which, or domestic processing market, which then went on to export quality. So whilst we saw a sharp decline here, this actually, um, with supply and demand, but also um, the contraction in the supply of the national goat numbers, but also the fact that the prices were really there for producers to actually sell them over the hook into processes in Australia. And, and we saw this really um, sustained, I guess, and that's forecasted to continue that those numbers will remain low as, as the processing carcass numbers being produced in Australia will continue to increase over time. It's great to know that we're an exporting um, industry, but it's really important to know about the consumers that we're exporting to. From an MLA perspective, we invest a lot into marketing, but we also invest a lot into our producers here. And so it's important for us to know who is actually consuming the goat meat in these countries and what's driving that to make sure that we can actually help with that international export um, marketing to ensure that Australian goat meat is the goat meat that people are actually preferring and that that demand remains nice and strong. So to give you a bit of an overview, these are the main, the global distribution of the main countries that we're servicing with, um, with our national goat meat. And the Australian consumption remains quite low. I've mentioned that a few times now, but we're, we're at that 8%, something that we're definitely trying to expand on. And from all of our insights, most of it is because a lot of Australians are not familiar with goat, or they have a preconceived notion that it's going to be really gamey and strong, and it's not something that they're, they're going to the, shop, the butcher shop or the supermarket and actually purchasing. And that's something that we really want to change because goat meat is great and it's super versatile but we need to make consumers familiar with it so that there's a willingness there for them to go to the supermarket and actually purchase that protein as their choice. There's a lot of producers, as, uh, sorry, a lot of consumers as well that it's not available where they shop and they don't know how to cook it. So based on these three responses is how we've actually targeted a lot of our domestic marketing. We're looking at making sure that um, there's awareness and inspiration on the broader food services. So we're investing a lot of um, resources into e-magazines and making sure pe people are becoming more familiar with seeing goat out there in, in different cooking magazines. And it's not something that they're not used to seeing. So we're breaking down that barrier. We're also making sure that we've got some really great masterclasses coming through with live chef preparation. So we can actually get it on menus again, breaking down that barrier for people not being familiar with it, but having a really good eating quality experience by making sure that those chefs are preparing it in a really positive way so that people are walking away from of having consumed goat meat and having a positive experience so they're willing to try it again. We know that if someone has a negative eating experience, um, with different types of protein, there's a real reluctance for them to actually go back and try it again. So we want to make sure that that willingness is, is a really positive one within our domestic market. And we're seeing that with a change in a lot of our different age groups where young adventurous people are willing to try different types of protein sources and different types of culinary experiences and cooking methods. And we want to make sure that goat, pe goat meat is part of that conversation domestically. So going on to 2022 and beyond, we're really focusing on improving our butcher resources to make sure that our local butcher shops are really invested in goat meat as well. It's not just that they're stocking um, beef, lamb and pork. We want to make sure that goat meat is on there on, as part of their um, product that they're selling as well. There's also Goatoba, which is a bit of a big marketing thing for MLA coming forward and then also inspiring food service professionals with our Rare Medium Academy. So Rare Medium Academy, if you're not familiar with it, is an MLA initiative where we have some really great chefs actually promoting products, how they cook it, and then um, servicing that information through our social media channels as well. If we're looking at our export markets, and, and US is that predominant market for us, it's really important for us to know 
who's demanding it in the US and what that driving factor is so we can maintain that market share to this really important um, market for us. So if we're to look at our goat meat imports by supplier, we are still the predominant market entering that um, US market. So we have the predominant market share over there, but we do see it being linked to Mexico and New Zealand. Like I mentioned before, they're very small export markets. Mexico, on a volume basis, does produce a lot of goat meat, but majority of it's actually consumed domestically. If we were to break that relationship down with how Australia actually shapes up against Mexico, we can see that our supply um, and our actual demand is, is quite different to the, the quite static demand, um, at, sorry, supply of Mexico, but they basically export less than 1% of the production. So their export market is very small. It's, it's geographically quite close to the US market, so it's easy for them to actually ship product in. The price point is a little bit different in which they're competing with, but it also gives us a really great advantage to understand that with um, Different, different markets, what's going on and what's in play there, but also especially in the southern parts of um, southern parts of the US, it's really culturally influenced by Mexican types of food and cuisine. So we know that Mexico as a country is actually producing a lot of goat meat and they consume it a lot, so it's actually reflective on their types of cuisines that they're um, producing. And I think we're having, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're having tacos today and that's Another thing that's really common in that southwest of, um, of the US, that type of style of cooking, and it's great to see that a lot of um, cuisines are going into that and goat meat can really be part of that menu that can be shared with the, the vast majority of the US as consumers. If we look at the ethnic background as well as the types of, um, I guess, US goat shoppers, so those consumers that are consuming goat meat in the US and are purchasing it, we can see that it's really dominated by a lot of um, Indian, Caribbean, Central and Southern American and Middle East are really driving that demand for goat meat. They want it on their menus, they're familiar with it as a protein, and it was touched on earlier um, today that they actually have a willingness to pay for a high quality product. Even though um, goat meat value is going up, there, there's a willingness there to pay for that premium value and they want it in their dishes and they want to consume it. So we're really in a great position to be um, placed as Australians to be exporting into that market and, and getting the value of that demand. In terms of where it's actually going we're seeing that most of it's actually going into Indian type cooking. And it's, it's quite a, a vast majority of it from our insights that we're seeing. So it's going through that, that Indian type dish um, where people are becoming familiar with it as well. If we're looking now at a, a bit of a new and an emerging market versus the, the US, which has been a pretty static market for us, but a really main key player, we can see that there's been a really great jump in the amount of um, product going into Korea and why it's taken over being our second largest export market. It's a, it's a really great value um, market for us, but it's also a great one that's going to continue to grow or is forecasted to grow over the next few years, which is really exciting to see how that plays out. In terms of how the demand's gone, it's been a little bit of a, of a rocky one the last few years. It has been impacted quite a bit by COVID, but also we, just before COVID, from that 2015 through to 2018, we actually saw a really good influx of overseas, sorry, in, influx in increased supply and export demand. And that was really driven by the um, overseas workers coming into that Korean market and having that demand for goat meat coming through, um, I guess, backwards across the value chain. And, and that's why we've started to really service that market and promote it a lot as well. Unfortunately, in the 2019-2020, it was pretty adversely affected by both supply. Australia's supply of, of goat meat had, had shrunk, um, I guess, in terms of the volume that we'd used. And then that was also reflective of the, the COVID-19 challenges that we had as well. But it's really promising to see that in 2021 and the forecast into 2022 was looking really great for this market. We're back up there with demand and we continue to increase in our percentage share that we have as well. 
In terms of where it's going and how they're utilising goat meat in the Korean market, it's also really interesting. They've got lots of versatile cooking cuisines and, and methods and goat meat really lends itself to that. So it's, it's a protein that we're ex experiencing um, and hoping to see that it'll be diversified in, in where it's going. It has that opportunity to go into multiple, adds lots of flavour and depth to a lot of their um, boiling, stewing and grilling markets, which is great. And MLA is doing um, some really great marketing promotion of Aussie goat meat, not just in Korea, but in all of our products. So if you're not familiar with it already, we have the True Aussie brand um, that we like to promote through our branding. And this is our True Aussie goat. So we also have True Aussie beef and True Aussie lamb, but we're really heavily promoting the True Aussie goat. So it gives that consumer that confidence that what they're purchasing is Australian high quality protein. Um, and it's a, it's a great way to, to help with that co-branding into these international markets because it adds that value and then they also have that chance in, um, in I guess, associating with a brand and, and help them make those informed marketing decisions when they're buying it and promoting it. That's it, a bit of a wrap up now just of some of our market insights. More than happy to talk to anyone about any questions that they have. I just wanted to, to quickly plug two um, research projects just to show you that we're not just all about marketing, but we also do a bit of R&D um, as well, and just to get you familiar with, with two projects that might be of interest for people in the room today. The first one is one that's recently been conducted by the University of Queensland, and it has just been completed. The final report is available on our MLA website if you do want additional information. But it's looking at the response of rangeland goats to supplementation. So um, the, the what about this project was really collation of intake and growth responses on rangeland goats to a range of supplements and, and how they actually responded to it. And the, the outcome or the main driver there for, for producers is that we actually developed a supplementation calculator, which is, sounds probably a little bit fancy, but it's an Excel tool, which gives you both a, a schematic in a, in a graph, but also the numbers there for you to support making that decision, whether or not you want to supplement your animals. And it looks just kind of like that. So if you are a, are a numbers person, or if you are someone who likes to see more the visual and the graphs, it's a really great tool that you can use to help make those decisions on farm to help drive productivity and, and for you to make that decision whether or not it's worthwhile to invest in supplementation. It gives you that return on investment for your property. The next one that we have, if you're already an MLA member and you're, you've signed up to our e-newsletter for Goats on the Move, you would have seen the Kid Plan survey was released last week. Um, it's a great little project that MLA is using to, to kind of investigate deeper into why producers may or may not be using Kid Plan and the value that they get from it or the reasons why they're not using it. So that we can actually then make change into, into the Kid Plan program and make it more user friendly for producers. So please do sign up. I've got some more information up the back if you have any questions. But Thank you so much for your time um, and looking forward to having a chat with all of you throughout the day.